Alrighty, hello everyone and welcome to this video for economics and personal finance. Today we'll be talking about the roles that government plays in the economy. So as we've discussed, we live in a free market economy here in the United States where individuals and businesses are free to make whatever decisions they want to make to a certain extent with the property that they own. The question is, is what functions does government play in this free market type of economy? What roles do they play and where do they interfere with individuals and businesses? Our objectives for this video and this lesson, first of all, what are we learning? We will determine the six roles that governments play in regulating a free market economy. Second, you will be asked to do an application later where you will read and explain one of two current event articles involving government involvement in the economy. And then finally, where else will this apply? This will apply to your module one test and in your module one project where you will be asked to come up with your own business idea. One of the things you will have to do is explain how that business will have to interact with governments. So the first role that we will take a look at that governments play is maintaining the legal and social framework of your economy. Basically, you need an organization that's in charge that can set the rules for playing in the economy and enforce those rules. In countries where you don't have a government there to enforce the rules of the economy, it basically boils down to, hey, if you violated a contract against me, well, I'm going to get my gang and we're going to load up with our guns and we'll meet you with your gang and your guns and we'll settle it that way. All right. We don't want that kind of violent system here in our country, which is why we have governments at the local, state and federal level to set the rules and enforce those rules. So, as I mentioned, they are heavily involved in settling contract disputes between two different individuals. If your business sets a contract with a customer and you feel like they violated that customer, you don't have to go and apprehend them yourself. You can call on a government agent to settle that contract dispute. The government's also involved in protecting our property rights, both our physical property that we own and our intellectual property, such as patents for inventions, copyrights for artistic works, and trademarks for art, for art and images that are associated with a brand that you might own. Finally, we have a uniform currency that we use in our system, and that is printed and provided by our government. The second and arguably one of the most important roles that government plays is maintaining economic competition. So the main thing that they're looking here is to ensure that there is competition among the producers, the businesses that provide the goods and services in our economy. What they basically want to avoid is having Mr. Moneybags over there running a monopoly over any industry. And we used to have that back in the day, and the government has a few well-known examples in our country of breaking up certain monopolies. The most famous examples of that probably include Standard Oil Company, so you might not know this, but uh, Shell and Texaco and Exxon and Mobil all used to be owned by the same company. The government went in and broke up that company. They also broke up AT&T in the 1980s because that was the only telephone company that we had in the United States. Uh, they later broke up Microsoft in terms of certain software applications. And even today, the government has not done anything yet, but they're currently looking at the power controlled by tech companies like Facebook, Google, and Amazon to see how much power and authority do they have over that tech industry and should they be broken up in some sort of manner. The reason the government does this is for two reasons. One, it helps ensure that consumers have a certain amount of variety in the products that they can choose from. And two, it keeps any one business from running the whole industry and then jacking up the prices way high. So it helps ensure the prices stay relatively low. All right, the third function that governments play is providing public goods and services. So these are certain things that regular businesses normally just wouldn't be able to make a profit on, so none of them would be providing it. Uh, think of it this way. I think military is the best example of a public good provided by 
uh, provided by our government. Because let's think of it this way. Um, theoretically, you could make the military something that people paid for on an individual basis. Uh, but it wouldn't make a whole lot of sense, right? You'd have some army lieutenant walking door to door, knocking on people's door, asking if they want to re-up their subscription for military service. Um, you know, for having military protection. That really wouldn't make sense. And you know what I would do is if I noticed that the person next door to me had military protection, I wouldn't pay for it myself. So, because honestly, the guy next door to me is paying for it and he'll cover my costs. So when you think about it, no one could really make money providing military protection. So your government has to provide that service. Same things with your fire department and first responders in a lot of cases. Same things with your public schools, as well as the infrastructure, the roads, bridges, tunnels, and things like that that we all rely on. Those are provided by government. The fourth function that government plays in our economy is redistributing income. So this deals with taxing and spending policies. Uh, the big thing to keep in mind here is that if we let wealth inequality become too great in our country, it will strongly destabilize the country as a whole, and that can ultimately lead to violent revolution, which no government asks. You can just ask the Roman Empire about that. But anyway, what government does is ensure that certain people don't get too rich and others don't become too poor through redistribution programs such as... Uh, such as welfare programs or food stamps or Medicare and Medicaid, Social Security. Uh, people always talk about the government budget and the expenses of certain things like the military and our infrastructure. But the three items that you can see at the bottom there, Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid, those three items make up almost half of our government's budget on their own. So this is a huge reason for government spending. All right, number five in our government functions. The fifth thing that we have here is maybe one of the more complicated to understand, but this is the idea of correcting externalities. Now, when you think about an externality, I want you to just replace the word ex externality maybe with the term side effect. So externalities are any sort of side effects of market economy interactions. Uh, case in point, right? I might own a factory that produces, say, steel, all right? Um, that's all well and good because I produce steel and there are going to be consumers that will demand steel. We have supply and demand there. But what we don't have a demand for is all the pollution that my factory is putting off and that I'm just putting out there into society. So what the government needs to do is to correct that and make sure that I don't put too much pollution into the air by doing things such as pollution-based taxes on carbon emissions. They also see this with regulations on things like food safety. Uh, you see this with regulations on building safety and labor regulations, workplace safety, things like that. Government also tries to encourage positive side effects in certain cases. Uh, one of the main vocabulary terms you'll need to know is the word at the bottom there, subsidizing. Uh, the government, in some cases, will help pay for certain costs for people if they think it will produce a positive side effect. This is why the government provides scholarships, uh, and it's why they provide education programs for people, because they realize that there's a positive side effect to that. Finally, number six, the sixth function that we'll talk about in the final function is stabilizing the economy. So these are the actions that the government takes during the economic cycle and most specifically during recessions, which our economy is in right now. Uh, whenever you have a recession, it's characterized by two main things. Number one, businesses stop producing as much. And then two, because those businesses aren't making as much stuff, you have higher rates of unemployment. Unemployment, as you can imagine, is not good for a society because people that aren't working aren't going to necessarily be the best citizens. It usually leads to higher violent crime and things like that. So we want to do our best to ensure that people can find work. And the government does this through a couple of methods that they're all using right now during this COVID-19 recession that we're in. First of all, cutting taxes. Uh, you can see that with the fact that they are currently deferring people's payroll taxes. So their social security and their Medicaid taxes that they pay. 
They're deferring a lot of that on businesses and individuals. Increasing spending on government programs. All right, we see that in the fact that they came out with those $1,200 stimulus checks, as well as the increased unemployment benefits that they're providing to certain people. All right, you don't normally see that during a just regular economic period. But because we're in an economic downturn, government is having to take some of these actions. Finally, lowering interest rates. Uh, what this refers to is how easy it is for you to borrow money from banks and places like that. The government can influence this through the actions taken by the Federal Reserve, which you will learn about later in this class. But anyway, as it is right now, our interest rates are almost at 0%. So if you want to borrow money to make a big purchase, like a house or a car or a boat or whatever it might be, now is a pretty good time to do it because you're going to be charged much, much less in terms of interest on that purchase. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, those are the six economic functions of government. Thank you for your patience in watching this video, and please feel free to message me if you have any questions. Take care, everyone.